Okay, so blessings to all of you uh, on this beautiful day. Uh, with the grace of the Guru, we are diving into uh, some beautiful teachings of the Guru. And I believe you can hear me well. And uh, let me just repeat, for some reason, if you can't hear me, then uh, we have options uh, uh, on Facebook. But if you can hear me well, stay with us in Zoom. Uh, so blessings to you once again, and um, we are going to dive into some beautiful teachings of the Guru, uh, the Master, uh, the Awakened One, uh, the One who flowed from the heart, the One who flowed from the heart. That's what awakening is actually. It's simple as that. Uh, you don't need to see light. You need to project light. And that is the light of devotion, uh, light of sacredness, uh, tears of joy. If you, are, have, if you have ever experienced tears of joy, my friend, you have taken your first step to enlightenment. Uh, even if you have not seen any light or anything that you want, that you think is enlightenment, but it's simple as uh, just being joyful. And another definition of awakening is uh, to, to flow with the moment, to flow with the moment. So let's flow into this beautiful moment uh, celebrating the birthday or the appearance day, we call it, uh, because the awaken, the awakening uh, consciousness or the awakened consciousness is always available, my friends. It's not something new. It's not something new that comes into your awareness. It is always there. But because of the veil, the veil of the ego, the veil of the I, the veil of the separate self, divides, hides that awakened consciousness which is always available. So appearance of that day, that great consciousness that manifested in the body and the mind uh, whom we call Nanak. Uh, Nanak became Guru Nanak, he became the awakened one. So we are celebrating that sage, that master's birthday. So before we dive into that space, before we dive into that space where we can feel the presence of the Guru, where we can feel the presence of the wisdom of the Guru. Uh, there are certain things that we need to align ourselves, and uh, that is called tuning in. So my friends, we will tune in. And how do we tune in? We tune in with the spine straight, and we bring, bring our hands in the center of the chest. So this aligns you with the cosmos. Uh, the, the, the whirling of the stars will be experienced. Uh, the fragrance of the flowers, uh, can be experienced. The flow of the ocean can be experienced if you are still. You know, they're happening, you know. The fragrance is ever available. The flow is ever available. The whirling of the stars are happening now. Everything is happening, but you're not aligned. And that alignment is done with mantra, uh, done with asana uh, or kriya or posture. So we will go into a specific posture to align ourselves with that uh, cosmic dance, spine straight, hands at the center of the chest. And we will be tuning in with Ong Namo Gurudev Namo. Ong Namo Gurudev Namo, three times. And then we will chant the Ad Gure Namo, Jogad Gure Namo. Those of you who know the mantra, you chant with me. And those of you who don't know the mantra, just relax and listen to the sacred sound. Spine straight, eyes closed. And let the breath come and let the breath go. And one more time, inhale. And let this breath be the breath of Guru Nanak. Hold this breath. And for a moment, I want you to forget yourself. It is very easy to forget yourself, my friends. Forget your smallness. Forget your separateness. Forget your separateness with the stars. Forget your separateness with the ocean and forget your separateness with the mountains. Just become aware of the breath of Guru Nanak, the presence of the Guru within your breath. And one more time, just hold, just hold and exhale. And one more time, inhale and hold and let this breath be the breath of the oceans and feel the vastness and the expansiveness of the oceans, the depth of the oceans within yourself. 
And as you hold your breath, I want you to forget yourself, forget your smallness, become aware of the depth of the ocean which you carry within yourself, become aware of the flow of the oceans which you carry within yourself, which is hidden by you, by your story, hold and exhale. And one more time, my friends, the sacred breath, inhale and hold and let this breath be the breath of the mountains, the highness of the mountains. Feel that within yourself. Hold and exhale. And we will tune in with Om Namo Gurudev Namo. Om Hold this breath, my friends. And as you hold this breath, I want you to pull your navel in and up. Let's activate some inner parts, inner vortex of your being. Hold, navel in and up. And as you hold the sacred breath, I want you to roll your tongue. We are aligning you with the cosmos. Roll the tongue and press the upper palate. Breath is held. Navel is in and up. Tongue is rolled. Tongue is rolled and press the palate and roll the eye and look onto the forehead from the inner eye. Hold. We are assigning, we are aligning, we are tuning with the higher self. These are the specific parts of the body. When you become aware, you automatically fall into the realm of the heart you automatically fall down onto the realm of the heart. Beautiful. And exhale. And one more time, inhale deep. And hold. And as you hold the breath, the breath of Guru Nanak, navel in and up. Navel in and up. And lift your heart. Lift your heart. Lift your ripper cage. Lift your ripper cage within which your consciousness is encaged. Eyes closed, tongue is rolled, and eyes are rolled, looking up into the third eye. Hold, my friends, hold. A yogi is the one who can hold the breath. Look at the beautiful definition. A yogi, a seeker, is the one who can hold the breath. Navel in, ripper cage up, lift your heart. Roll the tongue, roll the eye, and align yourself with your higher self, my friends. Hold, hold medical reasons, you relax. It will be an experience of aligning yourself with your higher self. Beautiful. And exhale. 
One more time, my friends. Last time, inhale deep. And hold the sacred breath. Let this breath be the breath of Guru Nanak. And as you hold the breath of Guru Nanak, I want you to forget your small self. Forget your smallness. Navel in and up. Lift your ripper cage. Lift your ripper cage. Lift your ripper cage. Lift your heart. Lift your chest. Lift your chest. Roll the eye. Look up. Roll the tongue. And let it touch the upper palate, the soft palate. That which is the key to anchoring the mind, the soft palate. The tip of the tongue is where consciousness sits and the palate where the mind sits. And when the consciousness touches the mind, the plug of the mind is switched off. Hold, hold, switching off the mind and assessing the consciousness, the wisdom of the higher self, my friends. For medical reasons, relax. Other than that, I want you to tense your forehead as well and tense the eye as well. Hold the breath, tongue is rolled, touching the button, the switching off of the mind so that consciousness, the presence of your being can be experienced, my friends. And through the nose, exhale. And very slowly, open your eyes. Satna. So that was to tune you in to yourself. So the wisdom of the Guru, Guru Nanak, the Aquarian master, the Aquarian age. <clears throat> there are two specific wisdoms which Guru Nanak bestowed upon us, bestowed upon humanity. The first is the wisdom of the breath. The wisdom of the breath due to which you are all your expansions, all that you identify yourself with is because of the breath. And if you know your breath, you know everything. So the first wisdom the Guru gave was Pavan Guru. How to dive into the wisdom, the Guru of Pavan of the breath. Holding of the breath, how to inhale, how to hold and how to exhale. These are the three important parts of your experiencing of life. If you don't know how to inhale, if you don't know how to hold, if you don't know how to exhale, you may say, I am inhaling, I am holding, I am exhaling. You may say that, I'm really doing it, but you're doing it unconsciously. There's an art, there's a wisdom, simple, specific wisdom of how to inhale, how to hold, and how to exhale. And if you get this right, all that is taking birth through the inhale, through the holding of the breath, and through the exhaling of the breath will become right. So this is the basic teachings which every individual on the planet has birthright to know. And that is the first teaching, the wisdom of your breath, Pavan Guru. The second wisdom, the first wisdom is the wisdom of the breath. The second is the wisdom of sound. The wisdom of sound, the wisdom of the tongue. With the tongue, Akri Nam, Akri Salaha, the Guru says that. How to create connection, how to give birth to what you want through your projection of your sound. How you speak, what you engage as you speak. The art of communication, not just with the world, the communication with your higher self, the communication with your higher being, the communication with the cosmos. These are the two important tools that every individual need to know. In simple, plain language, how to breathe and how to talk. But we call it the Pavan Guru and the Shabd Guru. That's all you need to know. And when you know the Pavan Guru, and when you know the Shabad Guru, how to use your tongue, how to use your tongue, look at that simple wisdom. But when you start applying it, it changes your entire reality. Most of the time we are talking from here, but there is a wisdom of how to talk from here, the Shuddha, the Shuddha, the Shuddha Chakra the seat of purity, how to bring purity into your words. 
so that what you speak creates an impact on you and on others. Not shallow talking, it is called. So the wisdom of the tongue, the wisdom of the Shabbat, and then there's an art of how to talk with your heart. So we're expanding that now. The wisdom of the tongue, the wisdom of the sound. The essence without sound, you cannot create any connection. So how to create connection, how to express, communicate with the throat, the Vashuddha Chakra, and how to communicate with your heart, and then how to communicate with your navel. Your navel communicates. In fact, the first part of your body that is impacted when you hear anything is the navel. Fear is first felt in the navel. Joy is first felt in the navel. Before somebody says something, you really feel it in the navel because this is the womb. In the mother's womb, this is where your journey starts. So anything which connects you with the outer world have to be felt at the navel, at the core of your being. And if you know this art of communicating with your navel center, my friends, you can move the stars. In the words of my master, he used to say that if you know how to communicate with the navel, you can move the stars, you can move the heavenly bodies. The universe will listen to you. The cosmos will listen to you. Your mind will listen to you. And now, why your mind is not listening to you? Why there is depression? Why there is stress? Is because we communicate, we associate from here. The art of falling down is called. Ultimately, you fall into your navel. The communication through the navel center is called the bakery, madma, pashyanti, and para. Para. You know, the word paradise, para desha. You know, para desha comes from the navel para, which means the communication of the beyond. So these two wisdoms, these two words of wisdom, the wisdom of the breath and the wisdom of the sound, we will be diving into these teachings of the Guru, which the humanity needs. We don't need complicated things. We need to know that which is closest to us. Because if we can change something which is closest to us, we can change ourselves. Ordinarily, we are bringing in new ideas, new concepts to change ourselves. And that is just an extra burden. We have to use what we have. We have the breath. We have the tongue. Intention as well that comes into it. So the wisdom of the sound and the wisdom of the breath. These two beautiful gifts the Guru brought. The story says, when he was seeking the answers, everyone us who are seekers, who are Sikhs, Sikh means a seeker. It's not a belief system, it's not a religion, although it has become a religion. When he was still a seeker, constantly trying to solve his problems and trying to solve the problems that were around him, one specific day, he went for his daily dip in the river called Veli. Veli. Rivers are very mystical uh, part of creation, my friends. There are many rivers which flow not just in this realm, they also flow on other realms because our universe is not just physical. Part of the universe is hidden, just like there's one that is available, you know, and then there's a part of us which is much deeper. It's not available to the world, but it's available to you. Even you are existing on two layers. One which the world knows you and one which only you know. So similarly, the universe also is existing on two layers. One is the known and one is the unknown. When you know your unknownness, you will know the unknownness of the universe. If you only know your knownness, then you will only experience the knownness of the universe. So seeking means diving deeper and deeper into yourself. Knowing who you are, not just at the level of the body, not just on the level of the mind, 
but also on the level of consciousness. And other subtle realms, the astral realm, the subtle realm, the radiant realm. So on this specific day, he went to this river and the rivers, as I mentioned, mountains, trees, wells. So these were ancient portals that was used by people who began to fall into the heart, into the navel. The deeper you go into yourself, the deeper you experience the depth of the cosmos. An ordinary river becomes a sacred. You can you believe that? An ordinary mountain becomes a sacred. An ordinary tree becomes a sacred because you have recognized the sacredness within yourself. And people start to worship Ganga, the Ganges, the Bodhi tree, the Mount Kailash. They became sacred. Why? Because people accessed the sacredness in themselves. We see them as mountains because we only see ourselves as the body. But then when you see them as vortex, as portals, because you have opened your own portals. And you know that you are more than what you know yourself to be. That is the path of seeking. And this great seeker by the name of Nanak, on this specific day, he dived. He had his dip, a daily dip in India in those days, even in today. They go to the sacred rivers, the river that is flowing. That is in movement. The water that is in movement, when you dive into it, something in you moves. So we have forgotten how to assess rivers. We have forgotten how to swim. We have forgotten how to dive into the vastness of the oceans. We have forgotten how to climb the mountains. So on this specific day, the Guru, it's a very long story. I'm cutting it short for you. And only that which is relevant to us and only that which you will understand. So on this specific day, the Guru, early in the morning, when it was neither day, when it was neither night. There's another vortex. It's called Amrit Vela, the ambrosial hour. When you are neither in the realm of time, in the day, when you are neither in the realm of night. In between, vortex, portals, they're existing everywhere, my friends. They are loopholes. Every moment, even your breath, as the breath goes out, there's a point where the breath stops and the breath becomes incoming breath, the outgoing breath, and then it stops and then it becomes the incoming breath. While it was changing its gear, you were neither inhaling, you were neither exhaling. Coming breath is life, going breath is death. At that moment, you were neither in the realm of life, neither in the realm of death. You were experiencing direct consciousness, God. Rumi says, where the road ends, I will meet you there. So this is where the road ends. The road of the mind, which writes on the breath, stops there, my friend. I'm just telling you the loopholes, the portals that open. And even in the blinking of the eye, my friends, when your eyes are closed, you are inside. And when the eyes are open, you are outside. And when your blinking comes a point when you are neither inside, when you are neither outside. And if those of you have seen the picture of Guru Nanak, his eyes are always closed, half closed. The reason for that, he's in between. It's called the middle path. Neither this extreme, neither this extreme. Neither in the realm of life, neither in the realm of death. That point, that vortex, that loopholes, they are available in your breath, they are available in the blink of the eye, they are available in the heartbeat as well, my friends. Also your heartbeat. They are available in each of your movement. For example, if I was to move my hand from here to here, there is the in-between point when I'm neither here nor there. So your whole movement, your every being is coming out of these portals. It's called the vacuum, quantum vacuum, called shunya. Everything becomes a sacred. And it's accessible, it's not to be found. It's available, you're not aware. 
It's called dhyana. Then you have to become aware of it. So the whole science which I started with today, the wisdom of the breath, holding the breath, where the breath stops, where the breath starts. It's a very deep wisdom. We will have that simple experience today. But before we dive into the experience, let's talk about Guru, the awakened one, the one who felt, the one who knew where the portals were. So on this specific day, the Guru went to have a dip. Neither it was day, neither it was night, in between. It's a very beautiful point or the part of the day, Amrit Vela. And the Guru went in. He had his disciple with him. And the Guru left his clothes there and he dived into the river. And the story says, the Guru never came out. The student, or the disciple of the Guru, kept waiting. And they passed. One day passed. He was sad. He felt the Guru is drowned. He came back to the village and he said, the Guru is, Nanak is missing. The whole village came and they dived into the river to see if the Guru have gone with the waves of the river, with the flow of the river. And it was true. The Guru has left with the flow of the mind. The river of the mind is constantly flowing and you're flowing with it. And there's a constant push and pull that is going on. I don't want this. I don't want that. This is a negative thought. This is a positive thought. I must think negative. I must think positive. All this stuff is running in your head. You're constantly being pulled and pushed by this river of your mind. And if you just flow with it and start witnessing it, Dhyana, that something transforms in you. So the story says everybody tried to find the Guru. And on the second day, they all thought the Guru or the Nanak is gone. He was declared that Nanak have been drowned by the flow of the river. And on the third day, those who have felt the Guru, those who have felt Nanak to be an extraordinary person, uh, they kept waiting and specifically his sister. She said, no, Nanak cannot go like that. Uh, Nanak cannot drown. He is here to uplift humanity. Those of us who are drowning in our mind, he's here to uplift them. So the story says three days and three nights passed and on this morning he came out dressed in the color of light. Vehi vichyo nikale tan par pagave vasan suhai with the saffron color, with the orange color. The Guru had an extra glow he came out of the river, came out of the river, totally transformed. It's called Jal Samadhi, Jal Samadhi. You can transcend yourself through the five elements, only the five elements, through the river, water, through the earth. So there were sages who went and dig the whole underground meditation cell and they sat in it and they became enlightened through the help of the earth, through the help of the sacred fires. This may seem odd, but this wisdom was available and is available. You have to choose your element and then you have to connect with that element because you are the five elements. You are play of the five elements from your personality to the words you speak to your projection. All is based on the play of the five elements. When a certain element is dominating, you are feeling a certain way. When a certain element is dominating, you're feeling a certain way. You are nothing but the play of the five elements. And if you know this play, you can go beyond this play. 
So the sages have also used the air element. They have also used the akasha element. All this is a science. And Guru Nanak used the water element. And coming out of that sacred river through the help of the water, experiencing your ever-expanding awareness, ever-expanding consciousness, the experience of God in the name of religion. Yeah? In, in the words of religion, we call it experiencing God. But it's the experiencing of you or your oneness or your unity with Allah. You are one with the stars, you are one with the mountains, you are one with everything from the blade of the grass to the twinkling of the stars. All these is you. And this can be experienced. Ordinarily, we only experience here. Most of us, we don't even experience our toe. You can't even experience your toe. Because you are caught up here, you're stuck here. Awakening means to be available, to experience everything in its freshness. Experiencing every experience in its freshness. Ordinarily, every experience is being experienced in relation to your thoughts of the past or your projection of the future. So the Guru, coming out of that sacred river, wearing the color of light, the saffron, the color of the sadhus, the color of the lineage of the Shuryavanchis, the solar dynasty. There are two dynasties. There are sages from only two dynasties. The sages of the solar dynasty and the sages of the lunar dynasty. The sun and the moon. Wisdom, any wisdom on the planet can be classified as the wisdom of the sun or the wisdom of the moon. So two dynasties in India have started. The Chandravanshis and the Suryavanshis. So in the Suryavanshi, Guru Nanak, Guru Ramdas, even Buddha, he was from the lineage of the Suryavanshis. It's a long story coming back to our story. So Guru Nanak came out and his first word after awakening, after flowering, first word, imagine for three days and three nights you were one with totality. You have become pregnant with the wisdom of the cosmos. Imagine that because it's in you. You can imagine. You can feel it. You can, you can tap into it. My friends, you can tap into it. It may not last. It may only last with the blink of the eye, but you can feel it. I want you to experience it. That moment, that primordial moment when Guru Nanak was one with the cosmos. I'm going to use the word pregnant with the cosmos. Can you feel that? You can feel it. It can be felt because you have that as well. Every individual have the potential, but we are lost in the push and pull of the mind. And another beautiful thing, Guru Nanak did not go high. He went down into the river. So my friends, there's another mistake we do. Awakening not necessarily means going higher chakras. It's a different concept and don't confuse it. It's about falling down into the heart, falling even lower into the navel. The navel is the center point. From the tip of your toe to the tip of your head, this is exactly in the center. Something must be here. So this is also the water element, going into the water element, the consciousness flows. So as he came out of this river, the first words of the Guru, Ik. That was the first word. Ik, Oankar, fresh, never have been it uttered this way. It was a new word in the grammar, in the words, in the literature of spirituality. 
एक ओंकार दैट वॉज द फर्स्ट वर्ड द एक्सप्लोजन द एक्सप्लोजन ऑफ दैट विस्टम स्टार्टेड विथ एक ओंकार beautiful translations are there but in relation to our story today in relation to that which we are uh, sharing today ik ohankar means unity of big unity of big body you are different i am different mind you are different i am different but the life in me understand this my friends the life in me you know this 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 aliveness in me right there's an aliveness in me okay body and mind you are different i am different but then this aliveness in this life in me uh, i hope you get this very important because some of us we don't even feel the life uh, something is alive in us it's ever available at night when we are sleeping it's seeing our dreams it never sleeps with us when i am in my awakened state it is seeing everything it is also seeing me as a body get this very clear it is also seeing me in the realm of thoughts it's a silent seer a silent seer you know we use the word seer this is what it is all of you are a seer a sage i repeat it's very important we are diving into the teachings of the guru that are so simple and so available it's not to be found it's to be realized my friends body and mind you and me are different okay but there's an aliveness in me something is alive in me when i'm awakened it is seeing me in every movement it's not the mind my friends you don't get this it even sees the mind there's something in you which even sees your mind which even sees your thoughts and this seer is the silent witness it is not to be obtained it is really happening that aliveness in me that life in me and my friends that aliveness in you and that life in you we share it we are sharing it i want you to dive into this i want you to imbibe in this i want you to be pregnant with this 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 what i have shared with you so body and mind you and me are different but there's an aliveness in me which is seeing everything uh, which knows everything some of us never even have bothered to explore it we are always lost in the realm of the body and the realm of the mind it's just third layer from you it is not far in fact it is you it sees the body it sees the mind it sees your feeling it sees all that you project your every experiencing is being witnessed by something in the back at least for now in the back that aliveness that life you and me and everything is sharing it we are sharing the same life that beingness is same in us that i am get this i am ness in all of us is same i am ness it's called tat in the sanskrit that amness that i ness i'm going very slow because this wisdom have to be heard this is suniya 
not just with the body not with the ears but hearing your story from your beingness that aliveness in you that life in you that beingness you in the words of religion they call this god god it's you beyond your story that i amness aham it is called sat naam sat means unchanging the second word of the guru ek oankar sat naam that was the second sutra the explosion after awakening sat means unchanging unchanging and naam means identity presence the unity of being this is the unchanging presence in all of us we share this it is same to dive this into bit deeper to understand this not intellectually but as an experience my friends water river ocean in the ocean there is a wave there are multiple waves some are big some are slow but all these waves are sharing the same water get that in the ocean waves are up and down big and small okay despite the bigness and the smallness of the waves the highness and the lowness of the waves they share the same ocean they share the same consciousness they share the same waters like that you and me feeling thinking some are high some are low but despite this you and me and all that is is sharing the same beingness story is over this is the reckoning ek oankar satna in the words of religion if i was to translate this it would mean god and me are one journey is over my friends when this can be experienced everything is experienced ek oankar unity of being we share the same life and with this wisdom he went to different parts of the world i hope you guys are with me he just could not have just a bit more into the guru into the wisdom into the precious wisdom it's not a promise it's not something you need to know in the future it is available in the now pavan guru shabd guru the outcome is wahi guru wahi guru when you know this two wisdom automatically your story drops and you experience the unity of be you go into a wow and wahi guru means a wow means wow and he means now and guru means wisdom wahi guru means the wisdom of wow in the now the wisdom of wow in the now i hope this made sense with this wisdom of the wow in the now the unity of being this unchanging presence we share a same presence we share a same life and nobody can deny this because this is not a belief this is an experience so guru nanak went to different places and everybody welcome to him because he was not giving a different idea he was not giving a religion he was giving you your presence which you share with all and he went to different parts of the world 
He went to the yogis, the siddhas, the perfected sages in the Himalayas who have been meditating for thousands of years, who have prolonged their body, who prolonged their life. And they were sitting in meditation because they have read in the Vedas the predictions of this awakened being. And they wanted to be in his presence, my friends. To be in the presence of the awakened one is the highest gift. There's no higher gift than that. Even awakening, enlightenment is not a great gift because that is your nature. You will be enlightened this lifetime, if not next lifetime. Next lifetime, who cares? But to be in the presence of someone who has bloomed is the highest gift. So the yogis knew we will be enlightened, but let's wait for the awakened one. Because they read in the Vedas, Kalhu prapte tadaha lo kompe duracha rattu bhavyate tadanam avatar mahima chale bhavadyate kaldushta pratagya lukas yong pakair hat ve khatrayane kuleshude nanak et sivanam te. It was written 90,000 years ago by the great Vedvyas, the great master, that in the coming times, the awakened one will come. The one who have bloomed will come. So they prolong their life to be in his association. The Guru went there to teach them the presence of being. And they called him Avadut Nanak. Avadut Nanak. The, 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 Avadut means the one who is beyond the duality of the mind. And let me dive just a bit more into this. Then he went and he sat with the Tibetan sages. The Tibetan masters, Tibet, the highest land where wisdom have been secured. Everywhere wisdom have come and gone. But that location, the highest land it is called, where wisdom is refrigerated, is held there. You know, in, in, in your, uh, in, in your uh, refrigerator, there's a part where you can, uh, you know, hold things for very long, the, 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 where you can make eyes and all that, I forgot the name. And the same thing for Tibet, it was the refrigerator of the yogic wisdom and the wisdom was held there. And when Guru Nanak went there, they called Guru Nanak as Rinpoche Nanak, as Lama Nanak and as a Badra Guru Nanak. Many beautiful stories are there. And then he went towards the Persian desert, the Arabian desert. And that is the location where the sages, the sages of the Persian desert found enlightenment through whirling, through dance. The yogis found them through the breath. The Tibetans found them through esoteric practices, through sitting, and the Sufis found through dancing, work. They're called the sages of the desert. Many stories are there, but we don't have time. So just one story. As he approached towards the, the land of the sages of the desert, those who bloomed while whirling, the Sufi masters, he ended up in one of the most sacred part of the Sufi teachings or the Islamic teachings. It's called the Makkah, which was the center of learning, uh, which was for the Sufi tradition, for the Islamic tradition, that is the center of their wisdom. So the Guru went there. They call that location House of God. House of God. There's a black, beautiful building and it is believed to be the house of God. And Guru Nanak went there. And the story says, it was towards the night. He was tired. And so was his disciple. And the Guru was so tired that Guru's feet was towards the sacred house of God. Or it was pointing towards the house of God. And this is not right. You cannot point your feet towards the house of God. So when a Sufi who have been seeking for truth, 
for a very long time. He saw this. A man has come and he's pointing his feet towards the house of God. He went and he said, don't you know, this is the direction of God. Don't you know, this is the house of God. And the story says that sage whose name is Ruktadin, Ruktadin took his feet and threw it onto the other side. And as he threw his feet onto the other side, the story continues that as he moved back, the Kaaba, the house of God, moved along with it. Guru Nanak said, please move my feet to that direction where God is not, where life is not, where aliveness is not. Where beingness is not. And again he took his feet and he threw it onto the other side. And as he looked back, the Kaaba, the house of God, moved along. And did a whole circle. And every time he threw his feet away, the house of God moves along. And then he remembered his story. Once when he was still a young seeker, he asked his master, when will I experience marfat? Marfat, that's the Sufi term for awakening. That is the Sufi term for realization. When will I experience marfat? When will I experience tawheed? Tawheed is the oneness of all. It's called Tawheed in the Sufi traditions. When will I experience Tawheed? And his teacher told him, wait, a man from the East will come. And he said, how would I recognize him? And the teacher told him, when you are in his presence, tears will flow and your head will bow. But he says, the Shara, the Shariat, the rules and regulations of the religion tells you you can only bow to God. How would I bow to a man? And the teacher told him, in the realm of Shariat, in the realm of rules and regulations, you shall only bow to God. But in the realm of Marfat, in the realm of Tawheed, wherever you shall bow, it's God. If you can't see God in all, you can't see God at all. And the story says the moment he saw that house of God was moving along with the lotus feet of the awakened one, tears began to come out of his eyes. Something had erupted. And that's the first symptom. You cannot experience awakening without tears. You cannot. Something must flow. Tears begin to flow. And without he doing it, his head bowed. In the presence of the house of God, there was another living embodiment of God. We call it the Guru, we call it the Master, we call it the Awakened One. And Rumi says, the house of God is the heart of the Awakened One. Rumi says that. He said, the external house of God is made of bricks and stones. But the inner house of God is made of flesh. It's made of vibration. It's made of sound. The sound of the heart. It's a har, 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 har. And har means all pervading all embedded consciousness. Today he experienced that. Tears rolled, head bowed, and he recognized the Guru. And he called him, you are Vali Nanak. You are Baba Nanak. And there are many beautiful stories. As we go on, there's another story where he went 
and somebody threw a stone on him. And as he touched the stone, the stone melted. The stone melted and his handprint is still today imprinted on that stone. It is still available today. People go, go and they bow that imprint of the lion who once roared. It's called the roar of Dharma. The roar of Dharma. Just like a lion leaves his imprint, so does the awakened one. Wherever he goes, he leaves an imprint. It can be physical, it can be through his teachings. And this is the imprint that he has left in us in the form of this wisdom of the breath and in the form of the wisdom of the sound. The Shabad Guru and the Pavan Guru. I can keep going, my friends, but I want you to experience just some of his teachings so that the imprint can be in you and you too can experience your blooming. You too can experience your fragrance, your aroma. You are here to bloom despite of whatever you are, whoever you are, how much ever spiritual you are, it does not matter. It is your true nature, which can be experienced with the simple tools that is available, that is the birthright of every individual on the planet. The guru of the Aquarian age, the guru of the flowing rivers, Guru Nanak. So my friends, having shared some of these beautiful stories, there are much more, but this should be enough to leave an imprint on you. And that is the idea. So now my friends, I want you to join with me in a beautiful practice. It is called the churning of the ocean. Churning of the ocean. Ocean can be churned. It can be churned. The churning of your consciousness. The churning of the ocean within. And you're going to use the mountain within yourself. And that is your spine. Spine straight. Ocean of consciousness, ocean of mind. And through the breath, you're going to do the churning. And they say, when this churning is complete, 14 treasures, 14 treasures blooms out of you. Chauda Ratan Nikaleon. The Sutra says, Chauda Ratan Nikaleon. 14 treasures bloom in an individual who learns how to churn the ocean. The churning of the ocean. Samundar Manthan, it is called in Sanskrit. We will be using the power of the breath and we will be using the power of the sound. So my friends, I want you to bring your hands into your easy, uh, into a prayer pose right in the center of the chest, like that. So this aligns you. So alignment of the body. And you can sit in easy pose, so you can sit on a chair as long as your spine, as long as the mountain, as long as the Samiru mountain, which is your spine, is straight. Eyes will be closed for this. Eyes will be closed for this. And they will be slightly turning, rolling back and focusing on this space we call the Agya Chakra, the Chakra of the flow, the Chakra of the flow. Agya means flow. Agya means the will, the will to experience every experience as a fresh experience. Once you become aware of this, you will start experiencing that. You may see light or you may not see light at that, I don't know. But you will surely experience the flow of every experience. There is no need to modify anything. There is only need to flow with what is happening. It's called Sahaja. Sahaja. Saha Ja. Saha means the breath. Ja means birth. That nature of yours which was born with your every breath. And that's what you're supposed to be. Okay. So spine will be straight. Hands in the center of the chest. And eyes will be rolled and you'll be looking up into this sacred space here, the portal of the third eye. Eyes will be closed. And for 30 seconds, just for 30 seconds, I want you to do breath of fire with Omat. Now, those of you, these are new teachings. Just listen to this. You will see a tremendous shift in your awareness. We're just going to do for a few seconds, a few moments, 
You can do it for very long, as long as you want. So just for 30 seconds, I want you to do breath of fire through O mouth in this posture. And how do you do that? Eyes closed, make a O mouth. This may look funny for those of you who have never been exposed to these teachings, but life have to be funny. Then only some fun wisdom will bloom in you. And that is why the yogis will run to the caves because they will do postures. They will behave in a certain way, which were not totally aligned with the civilized society. So O mouth, which will be like this. And you will doing the breath of fire, which will be pumping up your navel. It will look something like this. <clears throat> So I'm pumping my navel, my eyes are closed and I'm focusing on the third eye. Just for 30 seconds, my friends, to awaken the energy, eyes closed, let's start this practice. Keep up. Pump the navel, pump the navel, <clears throat> pump the navel, pump the navel. And the breath comes and goes from the mouth. So you will hear some sacred sounds. You will hear a sacred music. You will hear the sound or the frequencies of your own breath. And breath is a soul. So what you are hearing is the song of your soul. You are hearing the song of your soul. Your breath is your soul. The breath, keep up, keep up, keep doing as I'm talking. The breath is your soul. And the sound that is being given birth, this is the sound of your soul, my friends. I want you to dive into this O mouth breath of fire, the fret breath of fire. It will activate the fire in you. There are three fires need to be activated. One is the digestive fire, one is the intellectual fire, and one is the psychic fire. When these three fires are activated, then the fourth fire, which is the fire of wisdom, the fire of a gyan, is born. Beautiful, my friends. You have to practice this just for 15 seconds more. We are just doing for 30 seconds or so. My friends, eyes are closed and oh, mouth, breath of fire. Eyes are looking up, looking up, and you're pumping your navel. You are activating the churning of the ocean. You're activating the churning of the ocean, the churning of the consciousness. Most of us, this part of our body is locked. The navel center is locked. When the navel is locked, life is locked. You may be wondering why nothing is moving. The reason for that is your navel is locked. And through the wisdom of the breath, you can unlock your navel. Beautiful, my friends. Just for five, 10 seconds more. Pump the navel really hard. Those of you who are doing this for the first time, give an experience, dive deeper into it. It will transform you. This is the wisdom technology of the breath, technology of yoga, technology of union with your own self through the power of your breath. Beautiful, my friends. Eyes are closed. I want you to through the O mouth, inhale and exhale. One more time, inhale. And one more time, exhale. One more time, inhale powerfully through O mouth. And exhale. And inhale. And powerfully exhale. And powerfully inhale through the O mouth. And powerfully exhale. And powerfully O mouth inhale and powerfully exhale and powerfully inhale and powerfully exhale and last time powerfully inhale and hold your breath my friends. Close your mouth, hold the breath and as you hold your breath I want you to pull your navel in and up. Lift your rib cage, your consciousness is encaged in the cage of your rib cage. Hold Lift your chest, lift your chest, lift your rib cage. And I want you to roll the tongue, mouth is closed, roll the tongue and tense the eyes. The physical two eye, left eye is time, right eye is space. We are locking time and space, it's all intention. It is all the power of your projection and tense the forehead right in the center of the two eyebrows. Squeeze yourself to that point. Don't let go of the breath unless it's a medical reasons. Hold, hold, hold and through the O mouth, my friends, exhale. One more time, O mouth, inhale, O mouth, exhale, O mouth, inhale, O mouth, exhale. Beautiful, powerfully inhale through the O mouth and powerfully exhale through the O mouth. My friends, we're having an experience deeper. O mouth, inhale and O mouth, exhale, O mouth, inhale and O mouth, exhale 
And last time, oh mouth, inhale. And my friends, hold the sacred breath. Hold the breath, hold the breath, navel in and up. And lift your rib cage and lift your heart, lift your heart, tense your chest, tense your chest, beautiful. And tense your neck, tense your neck. And tense your eyes, my friends. So roll the tongue and roll the eye and look into the third eye and tense your forehead. Squeeze and tense your forehead and hold and exhale. And just for five seconds, don't move the body. Don't move the body. If you did it right, aliveness is being felt. Suddenly you are alive. You just did it for a few seconds. There's an aliveness, there's an eruption, erupting of aliveness, aliveness. Something has changed. Because when you change your breath, you can change your life. You just did it for a few seconds, my friends. Become aware of every sensation in the body. Beautiful. And my friends, very slowly move your eyes, open your eyes. Beautiful. Now we dive into the practice. It's called the Samundar Manthan, the churning of the ocean, my friends. How are you going to do it? Hands remain in the prayer pose. Mouth will be closed. Mouth closed. And roll your tongue. Roll the tongue back. It's the rolling of the red carpet through which the royal mind takes birth and creates the world. Okay, so now what are we doing in this specific exercise? We are rolling the tongue, we are rolling our mind. When you roll your tongue, you roll your mind because tongue is that through which mind takes birth. So we are closing the door of the chattering of the mind. At the blink of the eye, 1000 thoughts. So we are also gonna close the eyes. So we are just reducing the avenues through which mind is taking birth. We are bringing it back home so that we can dive deep into ourselves and experience consciousness, experience aliveness, experience divine, which is vibrating in us beyond our story. I hope you guys are with me. I'm going very slow. Those of you are very new. The wisdom of the breath and the wisdom of the sound. Okay. So tongue will be rolled. Okay. And it is touching the palate, the soft palate. As I mentioned in the beginning, that point there, that is the spot, there's a portal there, which can be used to lock and unlock the mind. Okay, so when you have a lot of negative thoughts, when you are swept by your emotions, this is the thing to do with practice. Okay, so when you use the lock every day, you will learn how to unlock it. It is not the first time, it's called practice, it's called sadhana. You have to dive into that. So that's why you have to be a seeker. Then only you can, then only you will start learning this. It's just, then only you will dive into this. So the tongue will be rolled and it's touching the soft palate on the back, the tip of the tongue, which is the tip of the snake, the kundalini, okay, touches the palate. This is also the union of matter and spirit. So the tongue represents the matter and the palate represents the spirit, the union of matter and spirit, the union of uh, uh, Shiva and Shakti, the union of yin and yang, the two polarities. So we are ending all the polarities just with your body. And this wisdom works. It has worked for thousands. And thousands of years, people have used this wisdom. You need to learn this wisdom. So tongue is rolled, my friends. Now eyes will be closed and they will be pointing up into the third eye. What are you going to do? You're going to churn the ocean. How do you do that? So hands in this posture as it is. You're going to inhale forcefully through both nostrils. Ordinarily, we are inhaling either through the left nostril or the right nostril. So one nostril is dominating at a time. When your left nostril is working, the right hemisphere of the brain is active. And when your right nostril is working, the left hemisphere of the brain is working. So you're always in two, you're always in division. Okay, so what we're gonna do is forcefully we're going to inhale through both nostrils and we're going to hold this breath. And as you hold this breath, you're going to chant the mantra Va, He, Gu, Ru. Va, He, Gu, Ru. And as you chant this mantra mentally, you will be pumping your navel. So I will show you. So you'll be inhaling, you'll be holding. Tongue is rolled, eyes closed, looking up. And mentally, 
synchronizing my mind with the navel, dropping my mind into the navel. You get that? We started off with the parabani, communicating with the navel, bringing us back to our origin, the seed of your beingness, the seed of your body starts in the navel. In the mother's womb, you were connected. Okay, so you bring it down. All the awareness is coming in the navel and holding the breath. Mentally, I'm here. Mentally, I'm chanting Va He Guru. Va He Guru. Navel. Va He Guru. Va He Guru. So all the awareness has come into the navel. I will chant Va He Guru. On each Va He Guru, I'm pumping my navel. And I'm going to do these four times. And then I'm going to exhale through the nostrils. I'm going to repeat the whole Kriya so that you know. So inhaling. So I'm inhaling, holding. Va he guru, va he guru, va he guru, va he guru. On each of that, pumping my navel, bringing myself, bringing my mind, bringing my story into the navel and allowing it to merge into the ocean or the river of consciousness. So we're going to do this. And Va He Guru, Va is the sound of the water element. Listen to this. Va is the sound of the water element. Va, Va, Va. He is the sound of the air element. Gu is the sound of the earth element. Gu. We go to the cave, we go to the basement, you hear the sound. And Ru is the sound of the fire element. The natural fire burns with the sound. And the English word Re comes from the Egyptian word Ra, which means the sun god. And that Ra of Egyptian comes from Sanskrit, which is the Ru, which means the fire. So Vahe Guru, the four elements. And then the silence in between all this is the fifth element. So the five elements. So what we are doing is we are de uh, 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 connecting, okay, deconfiguring the five elements, and we are renewing our whole being. It is like the snake leaving the old skin away and blooming into a new being. So this will help you to drop your ordinary personality. It will totally change the way you behave, the the way you react, the way you talk, the way you feel. Why? Because you are totally changing the base. You are totally changing your essence through the wisdom of the breath and the wisdom of the sun. Though this is called the churning of the ocean. And once these five elements are totally in alignment, ordinarily they are not aligned, and once they are aligned, your personality changes. You can change your life just the way you inhale, hold, and pump your navel and concentrate on the sacred sound in your inner mind. So let's start diving into this beautiful Kriya. We will do it about two and a half to three minutes. So I will guide you as you go on. And let's start, eyes closed, and looking up into the third eye, uh, tongue is rolled. And you will be inhaling through both nostrils powerfully and you will hold the breath and then you will pump your navel. Va he guru, va he guru, va he guru, va he guru. All this mentally and then you exhale through both nostrils. And again, one more time, inhale. And I leave it to you. Please start doing it as I guide you. Beautiful. Keep up, keep up. So you're holding the breath and you are pumping four times on Vahe Guru and you're chanting the mantra four times. So every holding of the, every chanting, you are pumping the navel four times. 
make sure your, your pump is deep, you're pumping the navel. Beautiful, keep up, keep up. The wisdom of the sound and the wisdom of the breath, using the tools that were born with you, that you own, not something that someone have introduced into your life. So using your own wisdom to assess your own wisdom. Beautiful, my friends. I want you to keep doing. You're almost done. I won't do it for too long. This is a practice that you can practice at home. And this is just to initiate that uh, navel center so that you can have a practice, have an experience. Beautiful. The churning of the ocean. And now my friends, as you're doing it, I want you to increase the number to five chants. So instead of uh, doing five, four Vahigurus, you're going to do five Vahigurus. So you're doing five Vahigurus, you're just holding the breath longer now. On each breath, you're chanting the mantra in four segments. Vahiguru, Vahiguru. Mentally you're doing it, tongue is rolled. And uh, the teeth are touching each other, the upper teeth and the lower teeth basically becoming a sandwich. Your tongue is like a sandwich. You're totally, the mouth is totally trapped and closed. Beautiful. And as you're doing this, my friends, make sure your breath is deep and you're forcefully inhaling through both nostrils. And once you need to exhale, you're forcefully exhaling through both nostrils. The churning of the ocean the awakening of the five elements, the rebalancing, uh, reconfiguring, uh, uh, realigning. Uh, these are some of the terms that we are doing now with this beautiful practice. Spine remains straight. The mountain Miru or the central mountain, uh, which is your spine remains up and you are basically pumping your navel uh, for medical reasons, uh, you may modify the Kriya, but if you, you know, you to get a deeper experience, just pump the navel. So we're doing five times, five times. Beautiful. And we're almost done. And now, my friends, I want you to increase this to eight times. So eight times. So Vahe Guru, one pump, Vahe Guru, two pump. Vahe Guru, three pumps, and it goes on to the eighth pump. Vahe Guru, mentally, mentally, connect, connect, fall down, fall down into your navel. Start directing your life from other centers as well. Ordinarily, we only direct our life from the head. And that's why there's conflict. That's why there's constant push and pull. The art of falling down into your being uh, you will suddenly experience an explosion of silence. Uh, some of you may start feeling certain sensations in the body. All these is part and parcel of the experience. You do nothing but keep chanting, keep connecting the breath and the sound, the inner sound, the inner projection of the sound, Va He Guru. And if you can, on each of these elements, I want you to also visualize the elements as you say, Va, feel the water. A is the air and go is the earth and ru is the fire. And as you are inhaling and exhaling, that is the sound of the ethers. So the five elements, you are totally changing your whole psychic field, my friends. And if you can do this, as I've instructed you, the color of your aura will change. Your projection will change. So there are two will. Keep doing, keep doing as I'm explaining to you. That is called a personal will personal will and that is called kundalini and then you have a universal will which is called the hukam so these two are not aligned you want something else and the universal will wants something else so this is the art of uniting your personal will which is the kundalini you as an individual you as a consciousness locked in time and space and hukam is you in the openness of or the transcendence of time and space. That is the will of your higher being. So we are aligning the personal will with the universal will. And that happens when your pavan and your shabad 
is one and you experience the va you experience the va and that happens when your story ends when your story stops my friends keep doing keep doing eight eight you are doing eight chants now beautiful beautiful keep up and now my friends as you're doing this as you're doing this beautiful practice along with this each time you are pumping each time you are holding the breath i also want want you to tense your skull and tense your forehead and tense your eyes beautiful so you're doing the same practice whatever i have guided you with yeah. along with that as you're holding the breath and you're pumping the mantra wahe guru wahe guru uh, like that uh, eight times you are also tensing your skull it's very important now we are going deeper into the flow my friends beautiful you tense your skull and you also tense your forehead and also tense your eyes your two physical eyes time and space just follow the guidance and just dive into it medical reasons relax other than that we are having a good time we are diving deeper and deeper into your being to experience the power of the pavan and to experience the power of the shabad uniting the both the personal will and the universal will suddenly something would stop suddenly something will change and shift not for long just for a few more moments my friend i repeat myself as you are pumping the navel and you are also holding the breath as i've instructed you and along with that you are tensing the eyes and you are tensing the forehead and you are tensing your skull beautiful keep up keep up now as you are doing this i also want you to tense your spine with that so as you are holding and you are pumping along with your eyes along with your skull along with your forehead i also want you to tense your spine beautiful beautiful so you are holding these locks as long as the breath is within you and as long as you are pumping as long as you are churning the breath with the shabad so these are important parts of the body where you hold your emotions your emotions anchor themselves in different parts of the body so we are freeing you from unnecessary emotions we are trying to help you to delete your personal delete your memory that is not allowing you to bloom into the flower that you are supposed to bloom into and that is the reason for that is because you are holding emotions in your body you are holding the weight of your emotions you're holding the weight of your emotions i repeat you're holding a lot of emotions in the body this specific parts of the body will help you to release it beautiful my friends keep doing keep doing and as you are doing this my friends i also want you to add the tensing of your shoulders the tensing of your shoulders so a lot of weight on the shoulders beautiful so as you are doing and holding the pump and you're pumping the navel along with the tensing of the eye the skull and the forehead you are also tensing your spine you are also tensing your shoulders my friends beautiful beautiful and when you exhaling powerfully you let go of all this tense tension all these uh, parts of the body that you are holding tight and then again you inhale and you hold and again you pump the navel along with that you hold these specific parts of the body so you are dividing the mind into specific parts of the body so it's no more in one projection it's in multiple projection you are expanding and when you expand the mind mind becomes drops and dissolves into consciousness because mind cannot multiply itself my friends it can only multiply itself as thoughts but that anchoring behind which controls all the thoughts the mind that that which gives direction that when it dissolves becomes consciousness that when dissolves or merges or blooms into consciousness my friends beautiful keep up keep up we are almost done and now as you are doing this kriya as you are holding the specific portals or specific parts of the body tensing specific parts of the body along with these i also want you to tense your sit bones tense your sit bones and see the whole difference now sit bones a lot of unnecessary all the emotions that you don't want to uh, resolve all that hidden emotions that come up again and again which you constantly throw down throw back into your basement so that whole part is where you hold that emotions so we are assessing the basement basically of your physical body my friends 
keep up, keep up. Now, as you're holding that, you're also tensing your sit bones. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, along with that, also your perineum, your perineum also tense your perineum. Beautiful. We are almost done, almost done. Just a few more moments. I want you to have an experience. I want you to receive this gift on the day of the appearance of Guru Nanak. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So you're holding the body, holding the breath and you're pumping and your tongue is rolled and touching the palate and the eyes are tense, the forehead is tense, your skull is tense, your shoulders are tense, your spine is tense and your sit bones are tense and your uh, perineum is tense. We're gonna do just one or two more round. Keep up, keep up, keep up my friends. Beautiful, beautiful. And now my friends, through the nose, inhale and hold your breath and just hold your breath now and pull the navel in and up. No pumping, just hold the breath, navel in and up. Lift your ribcage, lift your ribcage, tense your shoulders, tense your shoulders, tense your neck. And tongue is rolled, eyes rolled, looking up into the third eye, tense the skull, tense the forehead, tense your shoulders, tense your spine. And my friends, tense your sit bones and tense your perineum. Hold, medical reasons, relax. Other than that, I want you to learn to hold the sacred breath. And as you hold the sacred breath, these specific parts of the body, we call the portals, where different emotions are anchored. Automatically, they start to change. They start to modify themselves because suddenly you're giving it awareness. Suddenly the mind is dissolving. Hold, hold these points. And through the nose, exhale. And through the nose, inhale. And through the nose, exhale. And through the nose, inhale. And through the nose, exhale. Powerful inhale through the nostrils. And powerfully exhale through both nostrils. Powerful inhale through both nostrils. And powerfully exhale through both nostrils. And powerful inhale through both nostrils. And hold. And hold, and as you hold your breath, my friends, tongue is rolled, eyes is tense, and tense your forehead, tense your skull, tense your ribcage in and up, and lift the navel in and up, lift your ribcage, tense the shoulders, and tense the spine, and tense your sit bones, and tense your premium, and squeeze yourself into your spine. Lift the ribcage, lift the ribcage. We are almost done, my friends. We're having an experience of awareness, experience of consciousness. Suddenly your mind is not thinking, but it is aware. That awareness is called consciousness. That awareness is called the aliveness, my friends. Hold, hold, and through the nose, exhale. For the last time, inhale through both nostrils. Exhale. Inhale through both nostrils. Exhale through both nostrils. Inhale through both nostrils. Exhale through both nostrils. Inhale powerfully through both nostrils. And exhale powerfully through both nostrils. Last time powerfully inhale through both nostrils. And hold. And as you hold your breath, navel in and up, lift your ribcage, cage, lift your heart, your chest, uh, tense your sit bones and tense your premium, tense your shoulders and tense your spine, uh, tense your forehead, tense your eyes, tense your skull, and tense your whole face, and tense your whole body, and squeeze yourself into your spine. Medical reasons, relax. Squeeze and tense yourself into your spine. Squeeze and tense yourself into your spine. Squeeze and tense yourself into your spine. Alignment with the spine. Spine aligns with the North Star. North Star aligns with the entire galaxy. Alignment with the cosmos. Your personal will in alignment with the universal will. Kundalini in alignment with Hukam and very slowly through the nostrils exhale. And just sit still for a few seconds, don't move. <clears throat> Do nothing. Experience the alignment, experience the freshness, experience the aliveness. Suddenly you have become alive. Suddenly, you have become alive. <clears throat>
Don't move. Don't change. No desire. No there, no here. No there, no here. No inside, no outside. No left, no right. No up, no above, no below. No inside, no outside. No right, no wrong. No hell, no heaven. Antra sunnang, bar sunnang, trebhavan sunnam sunnang, chauthe sunnay jo mar jane taap ko paap na karna. Inner void, outer void. And the three realms of past, present and the future merges into the primordial void. And you have transcended the right and wrong, transcended yes and no. Experiencing the beingness in his freshness, this aliveness, my friends, those of you who did the Kriya. And this aliveness we share. It's not different in me and it's not different in you. And it's not different in the animals as well. It's not different in anything. This aliveness is shared with the oceans, with the rivers. And suddenly everything becomes sacred. Everything becomes sacred. When the sacredness of the breath and the sacredness of your projection of the sound is realized, then the Ek Oankar, the unity of being, and Satnam, the unchanging presence, which is me in my true nature, the awakening happens. And for some, this lasts a second. For some, this lasts for the blink of the eye. And for others, it is one year. And for others, it is lifetime. It depends on how deep you have dived. The wisdom is available. Your real nature is never hidden. It is always right in front of you. Just that you're lost in your thoughts. You're lost in your emotions. You're lost in your story. And when the wisdom of the Guru, the wisdom of the breath, and the wisdom of sound is welcomed into your life, you can expand these portals. You can expand this vortex, the stargates, these windows, it is called, or Satori in the Zen tradition. You can open the windows and then you can dive and see the expansiveness of your being. And then again, your story comes back. And again, you open your window. And again, it comes back. And like that, time comes when the duration of the opening of the window lasts longer. And then the windows become the door. And once you have reached the door, any moment, you can jump off into the sacred space. And my friends, the day you will walk onto the other side of the door, you will realize that actually there was only door, but there were no walls. There are no walls. There are no walls. They are just doors. And sometimes we just keep standing behind a locked door and once a while, those who have awakened, they realize the closing of the door is the closing of my own mind. Between you and your higher self, between you and the divine, there are only doors, there are no walls. You realize that you are always inside because when there are no walls, it does not matter on which side of the door you are. It does not matter which side of the door you are. I repeat, when there are no walls, it does not matter which side of the door you are. You're always inset. And that realization comes. And a yogi brings a smile on his face. It's called the cosmic joke. And that's why the laughing Buddha laughed. And that's why the Guru says, Tera Jan Gunagai Hasya. The sages laugh. The sages smile. Because that which I was seeking was actually myself. And in fact, there's nothing to be seeked. I'm always there. And when this is realized, a yogi sits. It's called asana. Sahaj gufa. Meh asana bandhya. I sit in sahaja. I sit in intuitive ease. And this is awakening which is available all the time. My friends, once a while, learn to close your eyes. Once a while, learn to hold your breath. 
and then churn them and allow the treasures of consciousness bloom within you. And with this realization, my friends, I want you to inhale again through the nose and hold your breath. Hold your breath. No locks, nothing. Everything is open. No locks now. Just holding the breath. Just holding the breath. When you hold the breath inside, it is called Samadhi. And when you hold the breath outside, it's called death. The death of your psychological self. And experiencing your everlasting awareness, consciousness, aliveness that was Adha Satch, Jagadha Satch, Hadi Satch, Nana Khosidi Satch. That which was prior to the birth of your world, that which stays with you even while you are indulging in your world, and that which stays on even when your world is no more. And with this realization, I want you to exhale. One more time, inhale and hold and let this breath be the breath of the mountains, the breath of the oceans, the breath of the sacred trees and the breath of the sacred fires. Hold, hold. Try not to do anything other than holding your breath. Don't think, feel and then go into your beingness. And my friends exhale. For the last time, inhale deep. And let this breath be the breath of Guru Nanak. Ik Oankar Satnam. Unity of being, unchanging presence. Everything is changing, my friends. And because they are changing, it is false. That which never changes is the truth. And that is the truth of your beingness, the truth of your presence, not as a body, not as an individual, not as a personality, you as beingness, you as beingness, vast consciousness. Smastam kalpanaha matram, atma muktaha sanatana. Everything else is an illusion other than your beingness, which is always as it is. Sat now. And through the nose, exhale. And slowly open your eyes and satna. So blessings to all of you on this beautiful day, uh, the appearance day. In some parts of the world, it is really the appearance day. It is actually the 30th of uh, November this year. It changes because of the lunar calendar. In some, we are one day ahead. So wherever you are on 30th November, if it's really started, then do this practice for 11 minutes at least uh, to have a deeper experience, to awaken yourself on the day of the appearance of the Guru. Do this for one and a half hour. One and a half hour. Uh, if you can't, then 11 minutes sit. Work on yourself on the day someone bloomed, on the day someone gave the fragrance, the aroma out, maybe you will be able to smell it. The great fragrance of the wisdom of the Guru. So blessings to all of you. A very happy appearance day of Guru Nanak to all those who are here and all those who are not here. Uh, it's my privilege today to share this wisdom and uh, share this technology with you through the grace of my beloved Master and through the teachings of the lineage and the great sages of this lineage. And before we go, uh, uh, this, this video will be updated, uh, will be uploaded onto our YouTube channel, uh, which is the making of a yogi. So you will be able to assess that. Please share this video if you can, you know, with those whom you think uh, will benefit out of these teachings. And towards the end, uh, uh, you know, some of you may be aware, uh, the world is changing and the world has changed and uh, more changes are coming and uh, the divine knows the universe knows what else is going to manifest and how our life will be but a lot of things are happening around the world and uh, specifically i would like to talk about this uh, corporate companies that are taking over the world 
and it's happening everywhere suddenly and somewhere openly in india they recently passed a you know a bill uh, which gives uh, uh, you know uh, more access to the land uh, to the corporate world and the poor farmers are suffering and a lot of uh, farmers have come onto the roads and and the government is not willing to listen and they have passed the bill and the farmers from all over india are suffering and uh, you know they are blocking the roads and uh, you know they're being terrorized by the police by the army and uh, water cannons and tear gases is being thrown on them so i don't know what we can do but at least create awareness you know uh, voice be their voice and the main media is not covering it so there's this hashtag it's called stand with farmers challenge stand with farmers challenge so if you can let the world know so that people can awaken themselves the time has come uh, when we take responsibilities and we stand with those who are working uh, directly connecting with the elements with the earth and even guru nanak towards the end of his life when he came back from his tours he touched the earth he became one with the earth and uh, you know he started a whole farming community so with the grace of the guru uh, if this can be shared uh, it's a humble request to all of you and other than that uh, blessings to all of you uh, again it's my privilege to sit with all of you uh, from different uh, parts of the world all vibrating uh, at a different frequency and suddenly now we are in one frequency this is called ek ohankar the unity of being are sharing the dharma the greatest gift a uh, greatest uh, uh, thing you can do on the planet is to share dharma and dharma dhar means to put and ma means ego dharma is the wisdom of putting your ego away that is it that is dharma it's not a belief system i don't want you to believe in anything i just want you to put your ego away for a few seconds through this technology and experience the vast opening of consciousness within yourself which can be felt which is available it's not difficult in the beginning you need some sadhana but then it becomes part and parcel of your life if for any day for a second or more you can just uh, uh, be happy for no reason even if it's once a month my friend you have touched that point and just start touching that often and that is it that is awakening that is the path of the seeker and that is the path of the seek and that is the wisdom the guru so blessings to all of you i'm thankful to all those who translated this wisdom in these different languages and uh, so appreciate their presence and and they came forward to volunteer to share this wisdom in the various uh, tongues in the various movement of the tongue so when i spoke i spoke in a different uh, tongue and you guys spoke in a different tongue so we then connected our consciousness as one so this itself is a meditation and also uh, devi kiran for you know hosting and taking care for of all these and her kirtan so i so appreciate all those who came and all those who contributed other than that uh, may guru ramdas bless all of you with health wealth and prosperity and the highest gift and that is the gift of your breath my friends know this and the gift of your tongue your sound your projection your communication it can change the whole world it is the age of communication now and if you know how to communicate you know everything this is all you need to know your breath and your sound that's it and with this we will dive more as we go on and uh, we also those of you uh, just let me take this opportunity uh, we are planning a new year retreat an online new year retreat uh, first and second so you can sit at home uh, we will uh, do a two days retreat the information is not out yet so hopefully those of you are signed up uh, you will receive that information soon in a week or so so it will be a, a, a online zoom retreat so we will have it most likely one and a half day we will do some beautiful practices uh, awakening of the sacred fire to burn the past everybody want to burn 2020 away and bloom into 2021 hopefully everything will be beautiful next year and so we won't put an intention and we will come and sit together so those of you who will be interested we are having a special uh, zoom uh, retreat online 
and uh, more information coming up. So other than that, uh, Devi Kiran, if you have